Hi, welcome to episode 23 of Novel Knits. My name is Danal and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about what I'm knitting and what I'm reading. Thanks so much for joining me today. I can't believe I have over 300 subscribers. So thank you so much to all of you and to the original 41 that were there for like a year. I see you, I love you and everyone who's new, thank you so much. I'm glad that you are all here. Um, yeah, I am still in my basement um, here in southeastern Wisconsin. It is super duper hot outside. So this is definitely the coolest place <laughs> in the house right now. Um, yeah, I live in Wisconsin and it has been like 98 degrees. And of course my son has baseball in this weather. So it's really been hot and muggy. And I went outside on Sunday and got a little bit sunburned. So I'm a little red. <laughs> I think I was out in the direct sunlight for about 12 minutes and I turned into a lobster. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, anything that I talk about today is gonna be listed in the show notes below this video, as well as where you can find me, information on my two year long make alongs. And I do have prizes to draw today. I haven't done it yet. So I'm gonna do that at the end of this episode because I'm gonna have to do this in a couple different sections because life has been super busy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm hosting, ooh, that doesn't look good. I'm hosting Sweater Year 2022, which is We're Making Sweaters, and I'm hosting Shop Your Stash 2022, which is use your stash to, um, to make your projects if you can. And if you can't, that's okay. It doesn't matter. You can double dip in both of my make-alongs. You can double dip in other people's make-alongs along with mine. I'm really open. I don't have very many rules, but the ones I have are listed below this video. Okay, so today I have a couple finished objects. I mean, I guess that's what happens when you don't record when you say you're going to, right? <laughs> All of a sudden you have three finished objects. And then I have um, a lot of works in progress, not as many as I could have, but I do have some works in progress and I have a book club today and then I will pull the prize winners at the end. So if you've been participating in the make-alongs, hang on to the end of the video or skip through, whatever you wanna do is great with me. So I'm gonna start with Vital Few which is just a few things going on in my life. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, always just leave a comment below. I love reading your comments and thank you to those of you who take time to comment on my videos. It's really, really nice and I, it just makes me so happy. <laughs> so thank you very much. And I respond to everybody if I can. Um, yeah, so we are in baseball season and it's been 98 degrees almost every day. <laughs> Today it's a nice balmy 86, so that should be a nice change. But yeah, this week my son has baseball Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the evenings. Two of them are local and two of them we have to drive about an hour for. He's on a travel team. It's exhausting, but they're doing really well. They're kind of a team that they either are great or they're like the bad news bears. And you never know, there's like no rhyme or reason as to which team is gonna show up. <laughs> so they're really fun to watch. And I always tell my son like, we're proud of you no matter what, but it is more fun when you win, right? Um, they were on like a three game winning streak and then um, they play out of this, they play out of a club that has two 11U teams and so they're the B team and they played the A team and they lost, but it wasn't a slaughter. So that was good. And then we all had a tailgate afterwards and it just, it was really nice, you know, because our coach from last year took his team to this new club and split it in half to, and then took kids from other organizations. So it's fine. There's feelings. So it was really nice to have like a nice tailgate and get all the kids together and just remind them that they're all friends. And it was a really, really sweet thing. But yeah, so my life has been baseball. There was a meme I shared recently that was like, everybody's going on vacation and I've seen some baseball diamonds because that is pretty much my life. Good thing I am a fan because, oh my gosh, if I wasn't, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> um, other than that, I mean, we've got 4th of July coming up. My birthday is next week. And yeah, it's just been really, this was the first week of summer school and heavy palms practice for my daughter. So I, it's this week has been, really tiring and I actually was in a really bad mood yesterday. I was going to try to record yesterday and I was just like, I could not, I just, I couldn't get there. So hopefully today's better. Oh, Penelope's here. So that's about it. Nothing too exciting. 
All right, let's get into finished objects. I'm wearing one. I did finish my rocket tee. I'll stand up so you can kind of see. Penelope is probably gonna jump up and say hello. Here she is. She just, I don't know. She's like my little comfort puppy. All right, wanna say hello? Okay, look at the camera. There, <laughs> she has no idea. All right, so this is my rocket tee by Tamis, oh my goodness, Tannis Lavely. Uh, she's the owner of Tannis Fiber Arts along with her husband, Chris. I did use Tannis Fiber Arts yarn. This is the Pure Wash Fingering um, and the Mohair Held Double, which if you watch me previously, <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to hold it double. And they're both in the deep space color. So here it is. I'm pretty awkward with that, but it fits pretty well. It's not, it's baggy, but it's not too big. Like I'm wearing like a, my son's baseball team tank top under this because we have a game tonight. Um, but yeah, it's, it fits well, actually. I definitely fell out of love with knitting this top. I really enjoyed it until I separated for the sleeves. And then I was like, oh, I hated it. And then I got into my rhythm and then I ran out of mohair because I held it double and you're not supposed to hold it double. And then I just fell out of love. I did not enjoy doing, there's an eye cord edging along all of the sleeves and all, all the edges, I guess I should just say. So the sleeves have an eye cord edge, the collar and um, the bottom hem. And before I blocked it, I really hated how the bottom hem looked. I thought it was terrible. I was not happy. There was, I had a lot of holes along the side where I was carrying the yarn. I, I must not have carried it well. I don't know there were just some issues that I had in making this. However, <laughs> I think the final product is pretty good and I think I'll wear it. I didn't do the greatest job right here. I don't even know if you can tell. It, it doesn't look perfect where I joined the eye cord here, but I mean, it's okay. I do feel that this looks like a homemade sweater, but I don't hate it. And in fact, I don't know what's going on with my hair here today, but um, I, I like it actually. I think it'll actually look really good in the fall with a pair of jeans and tucked in the front. I think it'll be good. So I'm glad it's off my needles because I didn't love knitting it. I won't knit this pattern again. I have the Dingley Dell by Isabel Kramer on my short list that I wanna start soon. And that's also a v-neck but it has ribbing and i think the the weight of it's a little heavier so i think it'll go a little faster going around with fingering weight yarn is just not my favorite thing but i do like the final product so it's just not ever going to be my go-to i'll probably make one to two fingering weight sweaters a year i just it takes a long time and <laughs> i need to see some progress i do feel like i sounded pretty down about this and it's not, I, I would definitely recommend it. I do really like it. The final product is great. I just didn't enjoy the process of knitting it. And I think that was my fault. I think if I would have not held the mohair double and not had to get the second skein of yarn and gotten through it when I had all that knitting mojo for it, I think it would have, I would have had a different feeling. So that's on me. It's not on the pattern. It didn't, it grew in length. I don't think it grew in width when I blocked it. So that was good. That's exactly what I wanted. And I like the fit a lot. And I think it's just a nice gray kind of shell t-shirt. So, and because I have something on underneath, I can't really tell, but I don't think mine's very see-through just because I held the mohair double. So it's gonna be definitely too hot for the weather we're having now, but hopefully I'll get some good wear out of it. Um, in the fall and maybe in the spring too. Perhaps in the winter I can wear like a t-shirt underneath it. I think I'll, I think I'll wear it. So yay, it's done. <laughs> um, okay. And then I, because I like to challenge myself for no apparent reason sometimes, decided that um, for Father's Day I wanted to make my husband a pair of shorties. And if you've been watching for a while, 
I made my dad a pair of socks for Christmas that were from a cranked tube of nomadic yarns in the Quirrell color. They turned out great, everything was wonderful, and I always thought there's enough of that yarn left over that I can make my husband a pair of shorties. And there was. So here they are. They do not match perfectly because I used, I just took the, the tube and like put cuffs on either end, cut in the heels and then did the toes, but they don't not match either. I mean, they kind of, it's funny, like the stripes match, they're just not, the gray stripes match and the colors in between don't. So I think these turned out really nice. He tried them on, they fit him. I don't, I have no idea what this yarn is that I used for the heel toes and cuffs, but they turned out great. I'm really happy with them. So there's two and I, I'm really happy that I used just about every scrap of this yarn and what's left I'm going to put in my son's um, cozy memory blanket. So I will have used just about every little bit of the skein of yarn, which is becoming something that I find I want to do. So I'm definitely thinking multiple projects with with skeins where I didn't always used to think that way, if that makes sense. You know, like I would be like, all right, I'm going to make the project and I roll up, wind up the rest of the yarn and just put it over there and maybe I'll find something to do with it now. Now I'm having forethought. I hope that made sense. <laughs> but I love these. He loves them. Now he can wear them. I wouldn't let him wear them until I showed him here. And then I finished my Rose City Rollers and this was sort of, I brought this, I brought these to a couple baseball games. I, and then I think it was over the weekend. I just thought I want to get these done. So I got them done. This is Rose City Rollers. This is a pattern by Mara Catherine Briner. And the yarn is Rose Hill yarn, light fingering in the in a flutter colorway. So this came as a sock set. And I just love the color. So this is where I was, I think, the last time I showed these. So I finished the first sock. And I finished the second sock. And they fit nice. They roll, they work, they're cute. I just love all the colors in here. Like you see the pink, but there's like speckles of oranges and yellows. And my favorite part was when I would get a really cool speckly area. And like I said last time, this mint green is what I'm living for this summer. It's all, I have never felt this color before and I'm feeling it hard this summer. I'm not sure why. And this was perfect because now I'm going to put these on my feet and wear them this summer. I usually, with the socks that I make during the year, I usually put them in a box and save them until like January of the following year. But this time I am going to wear these because I really wanted shorty socks, which is why I knit them. I have shorty sock fever right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get into my works in progress and then I'm going to probably take a break because I don't think I have my information together. Yep, I didn't. See, I'm I'm not totally set here. I, I'm, I'd have to go off the cuff for reading or for book club and I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> All right, so I've been working, I had a new cast on. I finally cast on my Miserina by Caitlin Hunter. The yarn I'm using is Stress Knits uh, Favorite Base in her colorway last Christmas. This is my color work. Uh-oh, I do not like when that happens with the cakes. Hang on, there we go. All right, it's a beautiful color. It's pink with like um, just beautiful speckles of greens, yellows, reds, purple I've seen. It's it's a fun, fun, beautiful color. And then my main color is Plucky Knitter Trusty Fingering in Town and Country. And this is an interesting color because it looks gray, but that's like a green. So it's almost like a camo green color. It's really cool. I like it a lot. I don't know. It's not really picking up correctly, but yeah, it's a really interesting color. So I am still in the color work yoke section, but let me tell you, I like this pattern a lot. I made some choices that I'll talk about, um, but overall it is really beautiful and I'm really happy with it. So you start, um, you cast on 
and it has like this rolled hem and then you do some ribbing and then you do short rows, which is always nice. And then it has a lace texture at the top. I don't know. And then these cable um, columns that go through. And then you start your color work. And I'm about more than halfway through the color work and it's really taking shape. So I, I love it. I've learned how, well, I knew how to, but I really feel like I mastered cabling without a cable needle. It's, it's been a very, very good skill to have for this because it's just a two by two cable that you do. So to be able to just slip two stitches off your needle, pop them on in a different order has been really helpful. And then it also was great because I forgot the cable on one round and then I had to go around and just, I was able to just fix my mistake without a cable needle. And I was really proud of myself. And I don't know if I can even explain how I did it. I, I went to the place where the cable was and I just took out the, the yarn. Like, so I pulled those stitches and then I held that yarn in back, did the cabling without the cable needle by just pulling the yarn from behind the stitches. This probably makes no sense, but I was really proud of myself because A, I cabled without a cable needle and B, I fixed a mistake without having to tink back the whole round. So it was great. I was really happy. So the choice that I made that I'm not sure about is I chose not to catch my floats. I'm regretting it, but I'm not gonna go back. It was a choice and I'm just living with it. So I'm happy, very, very happy with how the colors are working together. I really think it's very pretty. I think it's such a pretty pattern. I think this is gonna be great. So I'm really excited for this one. I just love those cables and I love doing them. I'm really happy with it. So it's going a little slow just because it's color work and I'm not, in the past I have done two handed color work and for some reason I haven't been doing that lately and I've been dropping my yarn and I don't think my color work technique is really great right now so after I'm done with this I think I'm going to take a smaller project and just practice my color work and see if I can improve it a little bit I don't know if I can but I'm going to try I think just doing a smaller project and getting back to trying two handed color work will be good for me just to get some practice in. I'm not one who really likes to practice <laughs> skills in my knitting. So, um, but I think if like a pair of mitts or something would be a great way to practice and it's summer and that's a smaller project. So that would be good. So I was hoping to finish this sweater by the end of this month. And I'm just not sure if that's going to happen. I always have too many things on my needles and it's very hard for me to focus. <laughs> so we'll see. It's still the goal. I have about another week. I don't see it happening though. Okay, next I have um, the Journey Socks by Margaret and I'm using Lolo Did It's Low Original Yarn in the Bravery color. And these were going to be for my husband. I have a hoe. I have a half finished object. But the pattern is awesome. I really like everything about it, except it only gives you one, like it's for a 64 stitch sock. And I usually make 72 stitch socks for my husband. And I thought like, maybe I should just add the stitches and just make it bigger. And I didn't. And so I made it, I joined it around, I knit a bit and I had him try it on and it did not fit him at all. It was like digging into him. So this is for me now. <laughs> I made it to my spef specifications. So here it is. It looks really nice. You start the journey stock um, here and you kind of go down and make the heel. You do a turn, you pick up stitches, you join it together. It's awesome. It's a really great, easy pattern seems to stay on my foot. I mean, I haven't really worn it a lot yet, but it's coming along great. So once I finish the second one and I wear it for a little bit, I will see if I like it enough to make another one for another pair for my husband. And then I'll just add those stitches to make it a 72 stitch sock, which 
I should have just done, but I thought, you know, I'm just going to follow the pattern because maybe, maybe that'll work, but it didn't. And then I have these, I was going to use this color for me, but I think I'll use this for him and then I'll stripe the bravery to make them like striped socks. I think that'll be cool. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. I think it'll work. Um, oh, and I'm not trying my bags and especially this one is so cute. This is by, I'm pretty sure it's bags by Awesome Granny. Yep, bags by Awesome Granny. It's a little knitting bee. She's so cute. I saw this on another podcast and I was like, I have to have it. And I got it and I love it. <laughs> and then this is um, in my Craft House Magic Bag by Ellie and the little rain cloud, which I love. I also put a little bit of work on my Outstanding Shawl by Christy Archer. I think that's going to be my next pri priority finish because I really want that off my needles. And then I thought when I weave in the ends for that, I will pull out my um, Shawlography <laughs> by Stephen West that I completed last fall and weave in those ends too. So I think I'll have a shawl end weaving in party when I finish, but I'm on the bottom border. It's it's exactly how I thought it is. I'm trying to do two, four rows a day, which is really not working for me. Um, I find that I'm grabbing, grabbing my socks right now because that's what's making me happy, but I, I would like to finish that for sure. All right, and then I have, um, I have been putting some work on my muscle bra by Yazolda Teague. This has come back into the baseball uh, game rotation. At first I stopped working on it because I thought it was bringing them bad luck, but it's not the case anymore. So it's over halfway. This is in Leading Men Fiber Arts um, show, step, show Stealer base in the Heathers colorway. It reminds me a lot of this Deep Space colorway. It's like the same. <laughs> Um, but I really love this. I really love working on this. It's really great. Um, I just keep my stitch markers in so that I know where I need to do the decreases when I get to them. I don't, whenever I see other people showing theirs, they don't seem to keep theirs in, but I do. And then this was my beginning of brown down here. So I did a belly button cast on and then sewed up the top and did my increases. And now I'm just in that I probably have done what, like 14 inches. So I, maybe tonight I'll get a couple more inches in and tomorrow I would like to get this off my needles. I'm doing this for the books and beanies make along with Professor Pearl and the gals from We Share Needles. So I'm hoping to get this done during that knit along because I would really love to finish this and have it ready to go for the fall. This is gonna be for me. Obviously, this is a color palette I enjoy. <laughs> okay, and finally, I have my, um, I have put a little bit of work on my Hug You Me by Laura Nelkin. Yeah, okay. And this is in Cloudborn Fiber Superwash Highland Worsted Yarn in the black color. And. This is really nice yarn. It is, what is the fiber content? 100%, oh my God. Highland Superwash wool. Um, so it is a wool, it's super soft. I really enjoy working with it. I've worked with uh, Cloudburn before and I've always really enjoyed it. It's always very soft yarn. Even their acrylic is nice to work with. So the Hug You Me is, let me see if I can find a picture of it in case this is your first time. It's kind of an interesting, little like shrug and you start in the middle and you then go out to the sleeves which is where I'm at. So I have done the back and I have done the first sleeve. Now to me I think this is gonna fit. Yeah that'll fit. Plus it'll probably um, grow a little bit in blocking. So actually, this is the left sleeve. I finished this last night. And this is a really enjoyable pattern. <laughs> I know there's going to be some seaming at the end of it, but it is super enjoyable. The yarn overs, it, it's just 
got enough interest to it that I really, really, really like it. Um, so the sleeves are fun. Everything's great. I was a little off on my stitch count for the cuff, um, but I'm okay with it. And I just bound off in pattern. It said you could either bind off in pattern or do a tubular bind off. And the way I've been feeling lately, learning a new skill just wasn't on my agenda for last night. <laughs> so I just bound off in pattern. And then um, I put, I'm being like much more detail oriented today than I normally am. So I hope that's okay. <laughs> so then last night, what I did was after I finished the first sleeve, I put my needles. So this pony cord lacing was in here and I put my needles in with the pony cord lacing and then I snipped it because I have a ton of this stuff. And then I just pulled the pony cord lacing out and my needles were in there. So that was a really nice hack for getting the needles on without having to like slide my needles back through these other quadrants. So that was, that was really, I was really proud of myself for that one. So I should probably get this um, second sleeve done in a week. The sleeves go fast. It's engaging, like I said, with the pattern. It's just, and the yarn and it doesn't take too long. It's so the sleeves, these are probably my favorite sleeves that I've ever knit. Maybe I just need more lace on my sleeves. I don't know, but it's coming along and I'm using this um, lovely little wooden stitch marker from Simply Serving. It's a little squirrel, isn't he cute? Can you see him? Okay. And I actually just placed an order with Simply Serving a couple of weeks ago and got a couple stitch markers that are gonna go in some giveaway prizes. So. I just love her stuff and she's been killing it lately. So I don't, I'm not normally a stitch marker person, but I've been, I, I haven't been able to resist hers lately. <laughs> and this is a mess right now. Let me just put things back in here. This is being held in this, my favorite bag from I Heart You, which I think this is always going to be in rotation because this is just my favorite bag. It's got this like metallic, Oh, so pretty and then the inside is just so pretty and it is her biggest size I think this is her extra large and she barely ever makes this size but it is awesome drawstring I love it there's her tag I hurt you and she's got a uh, channel on YouTube as well called I heart knitting I believe so that is it for my finished objects and my works in progress for this week. And then I am going to take a break, get my act together, and then I'll come back with book club and the prize winners. All right, before I move into what I've been reading, I just wanted to do a quick uh, stash update. Every finished object that I talked about today and work in progress was all using yarn that was in my stash prior to 2022. So everything I worked on this week, except for my outstanding shawl, which I didn't show because there wasn't much to show, that was all using stash yarn. So that was really great. I kind of went through a few months where I forgot that I was trying to use stash and I had some stash enhancement, um, but now I'm back to feeling that feeling like I want to move yarn out of my stash again. I wish I could have that feeling all the time, but I just don't. I love buying yarn. And I, I actually found myself yesterday when I was feeling really down in the dumps, like on a website, just like adding to cart, adding to cart. And I was like, you have yarn for, you don't need this. Just don't do it. And I didn't. Um, plus, I mean, I can dye my own yarn as well. So I'm trying really hard to be better. I, I had a, a, a lapse a couple, that lasted a few months too long. Um, but yeah, I am back and everything that I'm working on right now is using stash yarn and with the exception of a few things, I did buy some yarn last week. So I signed up to, um, test knit for Tiff Nealon. She is someone that I love to test knit for. Her patterns are so lovely and she's just so easy to test knit for. Um, she's just very 
relaxed with her test nets and things are usually in really good shape. There's not usually a lot of issues. It's her patterns, I feel like they come to the test knitters really ready to go, which is nice. Um, so the yarn that she used was Magpie Fibers and that's a more expensive yarn. And um, there was a 20% discount as a test knitter. And I, it's for a t-shirt, so it's less yarn than a full sweater's quantity, and you get a 20% discount. So I did do that. So I'm waiting for that yarn to come in, and then I'll be um, working on that test knit for Tiffany Lynn. So I've had a few situations like that, I've had a few situations where I've just seen something I had to have. And, um, but now, now all my space is filled again. So I have no more space. I cannot buy more yarn. <laughs> And that's okay. It's okay to fall off the bandwagon and I don't always reach my goals um, But that's okay. I think I'm doing better than I have in previous years and now I um, I'm not planning to buy any more yarn for a while. I Get sucked in every once in a while um, And I have one sweater quantity of yarn. I want to buy this fall, which is from Lolo did it I want to buy a sweaters quantity of her DK weight yarn in um, the Versailles color, which I made a pair of socks with or slipper socks with at the beginning of this year. And I just love that colorway so much. I would like to make a sweater out of it and she only releases it once a year. Will I die if I don't purchase it? Probably not. Um, but that's the only other thing that I'm planning to purchase. So bring it down. I have enough yarn in my stash to make anything I want. So I just always have to remind myself of that. Anyway, so that was just my little stash update. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Are you struggling or are you, I mean, some of you are so good using really, really old stash and, um, but anyway, that was like confessional, right? From like the real world or whatever. Ooh, who here has watched the real world? <laughs> That's kind of old school. It's probably more like, don't the Kardashians do a, a confessional? I don't even know. I don't watch any reality television. All right, so let's get into book club. I finished um, four books um, since we spoke last, which is, so does anybody else do the Goodreads? Um, I think my husband's coming downstairs. No? Okay. Does anyone else do the Goodreads challenge every year and challenge yourself to um, a certain amount of books that you're gonna read? Because I do. Um, and so I think my book reads goal this year is 50 books. And lately it's been telling me I've been one book behind schedule and then it was two books behind schedule. And you can probably hear my husband walking around upstairs. And um, I just didn't wanna be behind schedule anymore. So I picked a couple books out of my Audible library that I thought I could read pretty quickly and I did. So I think I'm still a book behind and I'm trying to catch up. But you know, there's only so many hours in the day. I mean, I listen to Audible a lot while I'm knitting, while I'm taking the dog out, um, sometimes just when we're hanging out at night. And I feel like I still don't get through a ton. And then I read my one book before bed and I listen to a lot of podcasts, which is probably the issue that's taking up some reading time. And I watch a lot of knitting podcasts. So there's only so many hours in the day and I listen to everything and watch everything on 1.25. So I'm doing the best I can, but I'm still behind. <laughs> but anyway, I finished four books. And the first one I finished was Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He's a Japanese author, and this is a translated book. This is the book from the Books and Beanies Mail, and I really, really, really liked it. I was a little neutral on it when I started, because the names are Japanese, it is hard to sort of connect with who the characters are at the beginning, but as it goes on, it's it's just really lovely. It's a beautiful story. There's four different stories, and you know, it takes place at a little restaurant, cafe in Japan, and there's like, you can travel back in time, but there's rules. And I think the story, the first story was about lovers. The second story was about husband and wife. Oh, and that one was heartbreaking. And then uh, sisters and mother-daughter. 
and it was very touching. Um, it, like I said, it took me a little time to get into it, but I did really love it. It was good. I enjoyed listening to it because I don't think I would have gotten some of the pronunciations without that, uh, but it was really lovely and I'm glad I read it and I wouldn't have read it without this knitting community make along. So uh, I would recommend it. It was, it was heartwarming and I kind of, um, I think I mentioned in one of my comments on the last video, like I miss it now that it's gone because it was such a charming book. It was lovely. I did finish Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Oh, and I gave Before the Coffee Gets Cold four stars and I gave Station Eleven four stars as well. I really enjoyed it. The writing is fantastic. It's lovely. Um, I just really enjoyed it and I kind of knew the premise because I'd watched the HBO miniseries and it is not exactly the same and there were things I enjoyed more in the HBO series and that I missed in uh, the book. The book was like, the book was its own thing and the miniseries was like its own thing, kind of. Like they were the same but different, really great word choice there, but I, I love the writing so much. I didn't feel like I got to know the all the characters. That's not true. I really thought that the character development was perfect in the book. I liked what they did with the characters more in the show. I thought everything was just, and it's probably, sorry, I, I liked it so much I'm at a lack for words, <laughs> but it's probably because we just went through a global pandemic we're still in it really and this is kind of about that so there's the Georgia flu that comes in and basically wipes out most of the population and that happens and then 20 years later kind of all these people that are loosely connected to Arthur Leander this actor who had a heart attack on stage the night that the world kind of ended his son his first wife uh, an actress who was in the play with him and um, the person who rushed the stage to try to help him and you kind of follow where all these people that survived how they ended up and a lot of reviews on Amazon were like there was no point to this book and I disagree I thought it I just loved it so it's a story that resonates with me and the writing was just fantastic and when I when I was reading it I was just like this is great. <laughs> I really liked it. So it spoke to something to me. So I gave that uh, four stars and I don't know what the difference really, like what elevates a five star book in my opinion. I don't know. I'm not sure. And I guess that brings up, I guess, a question. I have two favorite books of all time that I recommend to people. I probably have more, but the two that I are my absolute favorite books are The Book Thief by Marcus Susick. And if you have not read The Book Thief, get a copy of the book. Don't listen to it. Get a copy of the book and treat yourself. He is a fabulous writer and that story breaks my heart every time that I read it. I've read it multiple times. And the other book, it's just not at all the same, but um, I really love the book the Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Neffenmaker. And that's another one that I just, there's something about the way that she writes their story that I just loved so much. And I haven't read that one in a few years. I think I started reading it again when I was pregnant with my daughter named Claire and the main character in the book is named Claire. I did not name her after the, the character, um, but and then I just never went back to it. But that's a that's a book that I really enjoy. And I plan to watch the mini series that's on HBO as well. But those are probably my top two. So if you guys have like a top two, list it below. And because um, even if it's not in the same genre, I mean, feel free. I mean, if you guys are watching this section, you probably like books. So let's give each other some recommendations. I also finished The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. That's the Bridgerton series. I, after reading Station Eleven and I just wanted something pretty light and 
it was really light. Again, because there's a television adaption that I watched first, there were things that I liked about the TV show better than the book. The book is very much only about Daphne and Simon, really. Where the first season of the Bridgerton show, I liked how it was everyone, you got to know everybody a little bit. So it, that was really different. Um, and I just, it's my first one in the series. I think I have the second book in the series. So I'll read that one and then see if I'm gonna keep going. I gave it three stars. I liked it. It was kind of like a guilty pleasure, but I didn't love it. And if you are not familiar with Bridgerton, I don't know what to say. I don't know if I recommend it or not. It's not phenomenal, but it's, it's fun. Um, so yeah. And then I finished Arc by Veronica Roth. This was very, very short. And it's part of a collection that Audible did. And I like Veronica Roth. Um, she wrote the Divergent series. <sighs> she went to the same uh, program at Northwestern that I did for creative writing. I never met her. I think she was a few years behind me because I think I was in one of the first years of the creative writing program at Northwestern and then she was behind me. And I, I don't remember how I heard, but cause it's very much a literary um, program. And so it was just interesting to me that she came out of it and wrote like this young adult fantasy novel. <laughs> um, but I, I've read everything that she has written and I actually really like her Carve the Mark book more than the Divergent series. I think it's a, two-parter, Carve the Mark and something else, but I really enjoyed those. So that's just um, just a fun little fact. I don't know her, but I feel a little connection to her because we both uh, attended the same program. Currently, I am reading two books by Kristen Hanna, and the reason I picked up another Kristen Hanna book is not because I was like, I need to just read as many Kristen Hanna books as I can, but um, I have the book Firefly Lane on my Audible, and over the course of the last year, I've gotten two copies of it. So one I believe is from my mother-in-law and the other one is from my neighbor. So I just kind of decided to declutter my home of two copies of the same book that I would just listen to it as quickly as possible and move on with my life. So I'm listening to Firefly Lane. I'm probably almost halfway through it. It's okay. It's not my favorite. And I will say, I was talking to my sister-in-law, um, cause I've been, if you don't follow me on Instagram, every time I start a new book, I put it in my stories and then I have a highlights reel of all the books I've read. So if you are ever looking for a book that I recommended on here, you can always check Instagram on my highlights, my story highlights. I've been doing that. So my sister-in-law saw that and she's like, what did you think of it? And I said, well, I'm still reading it and I'm not sure. And she didn't love it. And I kind of feel the same way. Like this is the same author that wrote The Nightingale and The Great Alone, which were two books that I loved. And I don't know, there's just something. And I think to the other book that I'm reading, I forgot to bring it down, is The Magic Hour by Kristen Hanna. And I just feel like these two books are just not at the same level as The Great Alone and The Nightingale in my opinion. My opinion is not the be all end all opinion. I'm just saying like, it just doesn't seem the same. <laughs> These seem a lot lighter, but it's very dense. There's a lot of words, a lot of pages, a lot to get through, but I am enjoying it. And I think there is a Netflix series, obviously there's a Netflix series cause it's on both of these books. I haven't watched that. I don't know if I will. So I don't know. So it's kind of a, a story about two girls. They both live on Firefly Lane. One has kind of a troubled home life. The other one has, you know, really wholesome, strict parents. And there's, they go through a lot together. And yeah, I, I mean, there's nothing bad about it. I'm just not sure where it's going. And I've been reading it or listening to it now for a long time. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm hoping to finish this one um, in the next couple days as well if I can buckle down and I'm pretty close to the end I think I'm within the last hundred pages of the magic hour and I do enjoy it it's I kind of 
I don't adore it, but I'm enjoying it. So I think they'll both kind of end up in this three star range if I had to choose, if I had to like think about it. So yeah, that's it for book club today. Basically, I am just, I think I say this all the time. I want to be knitting everything all at once. I don't want to have a day job. I don't want to have to do things around the house. I don't want to have to clean my house. I don't want to have to cook. I don't want to have to do anything. I just want to knit. And I don't know if that's a great way to be or not, <laughs> but I have so many things I want to make right now. And, and then sometimes I think if I did finish every sweater that I have planned to make, would I even have enough room in my closet? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I ever get there. If I get to a point where I have too many sweaters. I did receive a book um, for my birthday. I did have a little birthday get together with my in-laws last weekend because um, my niece, my nephew, my brother-in-law, and I all have birthdays in June. And then we had Father's Day. So celebrated five of us. <laughs> and then my nephew couldn't make it, the one whose birthday we were celebrating because he had a, a baseball tournament. Um, so it was only four of us. <laughs> being celebrated. But anyway, I did receive The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've never read anything by her before, but I've seen a lot of really, sorry, those were my gift receipts. I've seen a lot of people really enjoy this book. So this will be hopefully a summer read I'm looking forward to, maybe in the fall, we'll see. For summer reads, I I think I am planning on reading a Holly Black book called The Book of Night. And there was one other book that I really, oh, The Thursday Murder Club or something like that. I think those are going to be two of my summer reads. Um, also I have a stack of books over there that I have to get through. So those are my immediate plans. Um, and plans sometimes change. <laughs> so we'll see, I'll keep you posted. And then finally, let's uh, announce our winners. So uh, this quarter for the sweater year 2022, you guys are rocking it. I love seeing all of your sweaters and I know it's gonna slow down a little bit in the summer, but keep going. And if you've finished one sweater or 15 sweaters, if you haven't posted in a while, you're still, um, you're still in all of these quarterly prizes. So if you're taking a break, that's fine. You may still win a prize. <laughs> so, and the prize for this month is this Magpie Fibers skein, swanky sock in Stitch Please. And I'm really excited to announce that the winner is Kitten Whiplash. So please reach out to me either on Ravelry or Instagram and let me know your mailing address and I'll send this along with, I usually try to sneak in a few goodies as well. And then for Shop Your Stash 2022, this month, the prize for that is a pattern of your choice from Ravelry or any website that will allow me to gift you a pattern up to $10. And the winner for that is joyful.makes. So if you could just reach out to me wherever again and let me know what pattern you'd like. I would love to give that to you. Um, I am so excited. And again, you guys are amazing. I love seeing you use your old, old stash. I mean, some of you are using stash that you've had from before I was knitting. I don't think anything from before I was born. <laughs> I'm not that young. Um, so it's been really, really great. And I love seeing what you guys are all making and keep doing it. Even if you, even if you fall off the bandwagon and buy tons and tons of new yarn. Keep using that yarn that you loved so much last year or four years ago and make wonderful things. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you hung in through the whole thing, thank you very much. I love that you're all here and um, I'm just so thankful for all of you and being part of my little community. So have a great couple of weeks. I will try <laughs> my best to be here um, maybe around July 4th. We'll, we'll aim for that. So take care and bye.